Hey, how's it going? It's Grant with Garden of Eater. And today, I got a box here from our last winner of the American Shrimp Contest, Best of Show, Ryan Hoagland. And they are some orange eyes. He's a little bit more advanced on his orange eye projects than I am, so I thought I'd reach out to him and get some of his genetics. Uh, he breeds a lot of his shrimp in, in similar parameters to mine, and so I thought I'd have better luck with these than previous ones that I've tried out, and hopefully that I can encourage some of the groups that I already have to breed a little more by adding in some more females. So. Hopefully some of these will grow up, be females, and I can jumpstart my project. And I thought this would be also a great time to talk about genetics, what would happen if you cross an orange eye with a normal eye, an orange eye with a hollow eye, or back with another orange eye. So let's dive into the box first. Focus on cutting this open, so do it safely. Keep on my fingers. All right. It's like a lot of red hue to these guys, which is great. I didn't really have any orange eye with a ton of red hue to them. I have a couple orange and a couple of steels, but not a lot of reds, except for the orange eyed red tiger. So these will be great. Let me get a close up shot of these guys for you. Alright, so I really couldn't get the camera to focus them through the bag, so I'm just going to go ahead and get them acclimated and get them into a container where I can show you guys them and then when they go into the tank for sure. Thank you Ryan Hoagland, these guys are perfect for my projects. And he did an excellent job of packaging, I don't use the styrofoam anymore, but the newspaper and cordon bag is perfect, so thank you very much. Alright, so I got the shrimp out of the bag into a container to start acclimating. And right off the bat you'll notice these, what start out as little white balls, but they absorb organic waste like the shrimp's poop and pee in the water. And as they absorb organic waste they turn like brownish. And that just means they're working, doing their job to keep the water crystal clean through shipping. And then the shrimp, right away you'll notice most of them are orange eyed, but there are two that are not orange eyed. And that is just fine. They still have the orange eyed genetics. I'm going to use those in separate projects. But for now, we are going to acclimate everybody into the same tank. And I'll talk about what we're gonna do with the non-orange eyes and what we're gonna possibly do with the orange eyes after we've had them bred out once or twice. Now, before acclimation, I took out most of the water. You can take out the little white balls if you want. I'm gonna leave them in, they'll just disappear in the tank. And now it's just time to get a slow, slow drip going into the bowl. To the bedroom now. We're at the tank where the shrimp are gonna go full of moss, some club on there, the shrimp will hopefully help eat that and that will disappear as the tank matures. I'm not a big fan of the club, but some breeders really like it. The drip is going at about one drip per second. I'm gonna run this for about an hour. I've got a towel down just in case when I walk away, if, if it floods, we don't spill too much water and yeah, we're just gonna let these guys chill in here for about 30 minutes, check on them. If I have to empty out any water, I will. And then another 30 minutes after that, I'll add them to the tank. All right, 30 minutes into the drip now. I definitely gotta take out some water before the final 30. 
and I just thought I'd take a second to talk about tank parameters. We're at about 150 TDS, 5 GH, 0 KH, 6 PH, and that's about what I run all of my tanks at. And these guys came from very similar parameters to that. So, an hour acclimation is plenty. Emptied out the water, 30 minutes to go. All right, so it's been an hour now. I'm gonna go ahead, take the drip off, and now we can add these guys to the tank. And I'll let them settle into the tank for a little bit and then get some close-up shots and hopefully their color will come out and you can see a little bit closer what they actually are. All right, so as soon as I dumped the shrimp into the new tank, they kind of scattered into the moss before they colored up. So I'll have to show them off in another video further down in the future when they've come out and started eating in like two weeks or so, then I'll start to drop some food into their tank and then they'll be hungry enough. Hopefully they get the club out of there and they'll come out and eat, but for now, just a couple spotlights on a few shrimp. So now it's time to talk about some orange eye genetics, and you can't talk about orange eyes without starting with the orange eye blue tiger. This is where it all started for orange eyes. You have orange eyed royal blue tigers and orange eyed black tigers. Those are basically the exact same shrimp, just higher grades. From there, we took those and crossed them with other shrimp to get the new variations that we see out today, like the orange eye blue steels, the orange eyed yellow king kongs, the orange eyed red devil, and so on and so on. And to do that, you take an orange eyed shrimp, cross it with another shrimp that you have in gold that has normal eyes. And when you do that, all of the offspring from the very first cross will have normal eyes, but they will have the genetic traits inside for orange eyes and then those would come out in future generations. So we call that being het for orange eyes. So F1 would be normal eyes, but they would be het for orange eyes. And if you cross those back together, then you would get about 25% of the offspring would actually have the orange eye trait. 50% would be normal eye, but they would be het for orange eye. And then 25% would just have normal eyes and have no orange eye genetics to them whatsoever. So after about F2, it is best to cross back with your orange-eyed shrimp so that way the genetics are guaranteed to be in the future generations because after crossing two orange-eyed genetic shrimp that don't display the orange eyes, then you can start to lose the genetics in the shrimp altogether. So to make sure that the shrimp all have orange-eyed genetics, you want that male or at least one of the shrimp to have the orange eyes present to make sure that all of the offspring will have orange eyes. Now I know that all sounds real crazy and really confusing, but basically if you look in this tank, the adults, the biggest shrimp in here that all just basically look like F1 Tybees, they're black and white stripes with transparent gaps. Those were my F1, they were crossed by orange eyed black tigers with or a uh, hollow eyed red ghost. All of the F1 offspring had normal eyes and you can see the normal eyes are completely covered in pigment. And then if you look at one of the ones that have orange eyed, there is absolutely no pigment at all in any of the eye. You can't see any black. And a lot of people get this confused where they'll see orange around the eye but the pupil itself is actually black. That is not orange eye. That is just a normal eyed shrimp that kind of just looks cool. It's like the difference between uh, brown, hazel, and green eyes and stuff like that. They're, they're just different. And then the orange eyed genetics itself will come through and then pop out in shrimp. But if you don't selectively breed and take the non-orange eyed males out, you won't get a lot of percentage of orange eyes. As you can see in this colony, basically one in 10 shrimp will have orange eyes. So in order to get those numbers up, I need to go through and remove any of the males that don't display any orange eyes. And that's basically the best way to guarantee that you'll have the orange eyes present in the future project. 
So now once you've got the orange eye on all the shrimp, from there it's just selection. I would get these culls out of there, any clear gaps and anything like that, I would cull those out and just focus on the target goal. In this tank, it would be the darker yellow for sure, so I would cull out anything that didn't look deep, dark, and vibrant yellow. And that is the fastest way to go about creating your own shrimp, is selective breeding. A lot of times when you cross another shrimp into it, you're adding in a genetic or a trait that you want but however, it takes so long to put that trait into the right spot, it is a lot easier most of the time just selecting and calling out the shrimp for the quality that you want. With the orange-eyed shrimp, there's so many possibilities and new shrimp to be created. That's why I think they're the most fun out there. If you want to start to get into crossing shrimp, there's so many endless possibilities. I definitely suggest getting your favorite type of shrimp and then crossing in orange eyes into it and seeing what you can create on your own because it's kind of like the most unexplored part of the hobby right now is the orange eyes and there's so many things that can still be made. If you have the tank space, definitely go after try and create your own orange eyes. For me, this project with the hollow eye and the orange eye, I thought it would be cool just to see what happens. But from here, there's so many different endless possibilities that I'm going to go. I'm going to try and make some orange eye tybees and make couple of different things from scratch. I think I can make some red devils out of these guys and definitely some red tigers just by the, the one running out there. So on that note, I think I'm going to end this video. Thanks for watching guys. Stay tuned for future content and hit that subscribe button.